everybody, welcome back to Spruverse, my scale model universe in part three of build the 172 scale Revell shuttle. Uh, this is a 40th anniversary repop of a kit that probably came out in the 70s. Uh, it's, um, it's been awfully fun to uh, get a lot of the comments and, and a lot of my awesome subscribers who are helping me and throwing in suggestions and uh, offering me decals and advice and uh, it's all appreciated because that's how I learn, right? That's how we all grow together as uh, modelers. But anyway, here we are in part three, lots going on. Uh, caution to you, um, as I get closer in on this work in progress, uh, it, it is glossed out because it obviously has a high gloss uh, on it uh, for decals. Uh, it's nothing has been painted. It's very crude. So it, it all looks a little dirty and we're going behind the scenes. I wanted to do that in this part three, uh, pr partly because, you know, sometimes process is important. And um, it's, it's sort of fun to, to show you uh, how I think and... Uh, you know, talk, talk about what we're doing. Um, again, layer cake, right? So uh, we have the basic, the, the basic model, um, and then we were going to spruce it up with uh, decals, uh, some medical tape, and a whole lot of love, <laughs> and some paints and washes and everything else. Uh, a couple of things to, uh, to talk about. One is, you know, um, as I start to put on uh, these decals, um, I, I noticed that the scale of some of them, it, 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 you know, they were designed for, it, it, especially my, um, uh, my aftermarket uh, decals uh, from, uh, from Lake, uh, Lake County. Um, th those, they're, they're basically photographs in a weird sort of way. And now nothing I'm saying is about disparaging them. They're all good products, but it's a thought I have. This won't be the last shuttle I make. So any mistakes or things that get learned here will be passed along to my next build. But that's okay. It's all about sort of figuring out and playing with what you've got. Um, but they are photographs and they are not consistent, even though they say they are supposed to work with the Revell 172. Uh, unless you're going to do some serious mod, uh, the window decals certainly did not. So um, I've got some things to work out there. But let me show you uh, close here. Now, don't panic. It's a, work in, <laughs> it's a work in progress. But I'm getting you really up close and personal here, okay? So um, our decals are on. Uh, yes, we're all super too shiny. Uh, but that'll all come down. Uh, one of the things I have learned is you cannot put decals on cloth. So wherever I need decals, um, I have to either leave that area open and then add, uh, put them on plastic card the way I'm doing with my umbilical uh, plates, do you see? And then I'm going to be able to work with those, drill a little holes, add and augment to them. But I think they, sh they, they, they should work out, especially once I've aged them down and done some other things. Uh, you can see I'm starting to put thermal blanket on. I've got some tiles that I have to um, put on closer to the windows. Now, what I'm using is uh, I'm using very small pieces of, of, of card. And um, of course, wouldn't you know it, they have disappeared. Here they are. Hang on. Of course they disappeared. They disappeared because I wanted to show you them. Here they are. So I'm using little pieces of card and what we'll do is is now they in the actual ship they're actually lined up this way curiously whoa let's put this back and put that there and say so those will uh, make up the tiles that go around uh, the windows at the bottom and then um, this uh, thermal blanket will go up and kiss the tops of those and then everything will get blended and painted in um, so th that's what I'm doing I don't need a super lot of them uh, but 
I think it's going to make a, a, a difference. Now, having, having said that, I do have a set of the white decals on the way, but that would mean I need to paint that lower section black so the white shows. Um, so you do white for black and black for white, if that makes sense, uh, because they're, they're, they're clear. But I think, uh, I, I, I think it will make a difference, and the scale will make a difference. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think what I'm going to do around the, the windows here is I'm going to add some of my own rivets. And I do have a set of those. So I will put those on, and I think that'll make a huge difference. The thermal blankets are going on quite well, as you can see. Um, they're going over the painted surface. And the way that works is, um, you know, you cut them to the various lengths that you want to use. And then you lay them down. And um, so, as you can see here, I just need to uh, lay it down. And I just make sure that my, uh, my blanket just touches the top of it. Now, what I'm using here is, a, is a, uh, a scribing tool that came from Squadron. I don't know if these are available anymore, but I like the, the, the rounded bottom of it, and I'm using it as a, as a burnishing tool, and I'm really pushing down hard and I'm getting a lovely effect. Now, don't forget, these have not paint, been painted yet. When they get painted, they take on uh, a very strange look. And I'll show you what that looks like right now, because it's worth it. Here is the rear thruster port control, and I've been painting these, and you can see it makes a huge difference. They really, they really start to to get this very cool look. Um, so um, I, I'm, 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 I'm very happy with, with the way these are turning out. Now, nothing has been aged yet. Nothing has been weathered yet. But um, here is what I'm going for. And uh, what I want you to see here is how dirty these are and uh, how haphazard they are and they're, they're just tons and tons of these thermal blankets and obviously um, to be able to handle them and attach them they wanted them a certain size um, but then there are all of these various different markings that are supposed to go over them which um, what I will do to make that happen is I will put everything on card and I will come up just to the card and, and uh, we'll see how it looks. I don't know. Some of my decals um, are, are, are fine. And uh, for instance, over the actual, the actual access door to the shuttle itself, um, I've got a really nice decal for that. And that came with my sheet. Um, let me show you these. Uh... Now, these have not been... Um, there. These, these uh, decals are still quite shiny. Um, I'll mat them down, but what I'm really loving there in the light, do you see how I'm really getting great use out of the, uh, the molded in panel lines? It's just adding an extra texture that I'm really happy with. Now, um, I think that what I will do is um, I, I will just sort of continue with the with the steps that I'm I, I'm continuing with um, because there's an awful lot of work to be done here um, uh, and once this is all painted and weathered and and you know it it, it should be good to go but um, I'm really enjoying the process of getting these. Uh, these thermal blankets down. Like for instance here, where um, I, I need to actually create a, a, a black square around these thruster ports. Um, so I won't go there, but I will go here at the side. And um, if you notice, actually I can probably do it. Let me do this one because I think it's more fun for you. 
if you notice, see where it, it touches the, um, no, I'm not in camera. Hang on here. When you do this live to tape, this is a bit of what you play with, but boy, do it, does it save in editing. There we go. And then what you do is, is you come along and you lay down your tape, your, your, uh, your thermal blanket. Of course, you don't want to cooperate. Come on. There. And then you get your burnisher out and you really start to burnish it. Now I notice here I've got a little bit of overlap, so um, that's okay. We'll gently trim that back, push that back like this. Isn't that great? And if you want to, you can take a little bit of this 010 and where it touches the tile, you can, you can do that. Do you see? If you want to, but I don't think I need to. Um, and that really is the connection point. And, I, and, I, and once, that, once that is painted, um, th that should be pretty good. I'm also happy with the fact that I can see in my windows, I can see my dashboard. So that's gonna, uh, that, that, that worked out really well. I mean, I think one, every, once everything has a, uh, a blended coat of matte varnish on it, it'll all come together. Uh, let me show you the rear, because I've been working on that. Now, it may look like a little bit of a dog's breakfast to you, <laughs> but to me, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Let me get this on. Um, let me, here we go. So what I've got here is my rear... My rear, um, uh, I guess, engine compartment or engine bells or uh, the, you know, this, the, this is all supposed to be tiled, which I've been doing. Um, and it's got thermal blankets around it, which I've been putting on. But the piece de la resistance is, are these engine bells, which I've been working on. And, and I think you'll agree. Now, these aren't necessarily in the right position, but um, I wanted to put one in so you could see. Look how that starts to come alive. Isn't that amazing? It just really comes alive. And um, I, I can tell you, uh, if we get up close here, that these engine bells are pretty spectacular. They really are. And uh, they're, they're, just, they're just doing a really great job. I've also finished my tail here, as you can see, and all that is on, and, and, and we've started to weather that. So that's really coming along quite well. Um, what I, what I want to do now is um, I want to I sort of continue working on getting all those thermal blankets down. We're going to also uh, talk about this carbon, carbon, carbon on carbon edge. Um, because uh, we're going we're gonna to achieve, we're going to achieve that with, um, uh, a, a Vallejo matte black, and then we'll dust it down a little bit. Um, but that leading edge is really important. Now, I do have a decal for that, um, which may be a better way to go, or it may be worth doing it just to see what it looks like, because this is a complete exper <laughs> experiment. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, but I most likely should probably paint it. Um, so, so that that will start to really blend this together. Um, and then you've got various ele elements where you've got um, scribed lines on here that basically say tile, thermal blanket. Um, but that ne is not necessarily what happened to Discovery. As I've noticed through my research is as the ship got older and they had to make repairs and they had to start sort of changing, they also started to learn a lot more about what uh, what happened when these tiles come off and uh, all the th thermal blankets are getting a lot of uh, bang. Um, if you remember, one of the things that was implemented later on after the loss of Challenger was that once the shuttle was in uh, Earth's orbit, 
before it would do anything, what they asked it to do, um, it, it was sort of flying along. And then what it had to do is it had to do a belly roll like this so that NASA could or Houston could take a look at the underneath and see, because uh, obviously this is the most critical part of this ship, and see if they'd lost any tiles. Um, and if they had, uh, they were going to have to do some repairs in space before they could come home. So, um, you know, for as massive as this thing is, and as impressive as it is in person, the fragility of it is really, really comes home. The impact of that really comes home when you realize what it took to bring it home. And... Um, uh, we learned an awful lot I, I, again, you know, from the tragic, uh, from the tragic loss of um, another shuttle um, on re-entry. So uh, a, a, a lot to learn, but um, I'm really excited about it. Uh, it. It's 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 fun, and you know, um, we'll we'll continue to sort of put all of our layering on it, and then when we're done, you be the judge of whether or not. Um, the medical tape thermal blankets and decals really uh, do give you an opportunity uh, to, to create something special, or perhaps not, and um, no harm, now, no foul. But uh, sometimes uh, on the channel, I like to build things, not necessarily because I'm trying to wow everybody and say, aren't I clever, but because as hobbyists, we all go through the same things. You know, we've all got the same tools for the most part. We've all have access to the same aftermarket parts for the most part. But um, I'm here, hopefully, as a little bit of a service to those who are trying to improve their skills, but are also curious to know what's out there, but don't necessarily want to spend that kind of cash to go out there and, uh, and, and find out it's not something they really wanted and they can't return it. So anyway, lots of fun there. One other thing I want to show you before we end this segment is I had an awful time uh, trying to get this, uh, uh, this uh, lined up right here, this tail fin. I've got it lined up to the best of my ability, but as you can see, I have got a step. So I'm going to have to take care of that um, before we, we continue. And um, so we will do that. Now, we do have, uh, we do have more thermal blanket and tiles that have to go on here. Uh, so we'll uh, address that, but I, I, I just wanted to show you that uh, the, the, the fit on this uh, bad boy <laughs> is not anything to celebrate. Uh, it's, it's pretty crude. And, um, but, you know, when it's all finished, it's going to look kind of funky and, and interesting and, and have some really fun details. And again, you know, uh, sometimes I like to implement the three-foot rule. Uh, we're not trying to get you macro close on something and, and try to say, hey, look at that. You can't tell whether it's um, alive or Memorex. Uh, sorry, obscure reference to an old TV commercial. But uh, some of you more seasoned folks will remember that. But um, no, uh, I'm serious when I say, you know, uh, there's a lot of guys out there who love to get you super, super close and show you how incredibly detailed they are. And I am in awe of them, every single one of them. Uh, but sadly, some of my skills, uh, you know, I can do some things, but n not all, all of them. But hey ho, uh, this, um, this uh, I, I, I think is coming along. Now, I think what we'll do is in the next segment, we will, on, on camera, we will lay down our, um, uh, we'll lay down our um, tiles on the belly of this thing because it, it, it's an awful lot to get down, but we'll lay those down. Um, and where we don't have tiles, now we've got, they've given us extra tile, but where we don't have tile, um, I'm finding that um, a Sharpie with uh, some 010 card and or uh, just my, um, my Vallejo uh, 057 Black uh, is, is doing the job. So pretty cool. Anyway, that's the update for segment one here. Uh, segment two, uh, when we get there, which will, for you will be a nanosecond, uh, we'll, we'll get the decals on this and, and uh, we'll all check them out and see what we've got. Okay? So stick around. So in the nanosecond uh, that it took for us to leap from the first segment to this segment, I've been a very busy beaver. 
<laughs> and we'll show you that stuff in, in, in just a minute. Um, I've gotten quite far on the, uh, the, the, the top side of, of the shuttle, but I wanted to do a, a decal segment, so here we are. This is the aftermarket decals uh, from Lake County Port, Spaceport. And uh, it's a legacy sort of thing where they explain to you the gentleman that uh, was the original designer of this and obviously a passionate shuttle um, proponent and uh, uh, offered this kit. Or I should say offered these decals. And um, the, uh, the reality is, is there's no one else out there offering th this, kind of, uh, this kind of stuff. And, and, you know that, that I could find. There's a, there's a couple of versions of it, um, but this this is uh, I think um, you know the one that y you really want. So anyway, uh, what I've done is I have uh, cut out the, the 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 pieces that we're using here, and uh, I'm going to desperately try not to get my fat head in the way. I apologize. And you can see it covers the surface uh, of, of, the, of the, uh, the belly of this beast quite well. Uh, there's going to be some cleanup and there's going to be a little bit of gappage in the middle, but they do give you some additional tiles to lay down here and that's what we'll use. And then where we can, we will fill in with our, um, with our uh, Vallejo uh, flat black. Um, it's, it's a, it's, it's a good color for this. Uh, it's very muted and it, it sort of disappears. You'll also notice here that there are some very, very dark areas and that is to simulate uh, fresher, newer tiles. Now the scale of this is too small to actually see the numbered uh, details, but we will, with some oil paints, be putting a whole bunch of streaks and, and, and softening this down a bit. Um, I've laid these tiles down here on the, um, this is the, uh, the, the fin that actually protects uh, the engines as it comes into land. Very, very interesting. So, um, and um, nothing has um, obviously been sealed or anything yet, but uh, anyway, let's dive in. So, um, I've pre-cut everything, so I'm going to uh, take off my left side first. Um, now I know where everything goes. And I'm most likely going to start with the easiest piece first. And for me, the easiest piece uh, for this most likely is, is, um, is, is going to be this, this rear tail. I don't want to start here because if I'm grabbing it or holding it or anything and I pull on these, uh, they do take a little while to dry and they will come off. So everything is being removed. I know where everything goes-ish and away we go. So, um, and as you know, um, I'm presenting this with landing gears down as it looks right now in the Smithsonian. Uh, let me give you a quick sneak peek of the top. I'm, I'm not going to do anything other than just flip it for a second. So, da-da, there she is, and uh, she's looking quite good. There's a lot, still a lot to do, but I'm, I'm pretty, pretty stoked about it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it off this foam st stand, and I'm going to bring in my, I've got a sort of a soft cloth here, and I'm going to lay that down like such it so that I can work on this bad boy. Um, and she's going she's gonna, to um, have a tendency to want to, to wanna list. So uh, this, is, this is not going to be um, super, super easy, but it's also shouldn't be that difficult. It shouldn't be. Um, so um, step one is we're going to start with the... Uh, left side, right side now, obviously. And what I'm, what I'm noticing right away is that I've got a, uh, a lot of cleanup here to do in terms of laying down either more tile or painting, and that, that'll be fine. Um, and I also notice that um, 
I also notice that I'm going to have a line right down the middle. So what I want to do is, is I want to give myself a, I think I want to give myself some re pin registration marks so I know where I want to go. Um, forgive the glare. Um, but what I'm actually lining up to is the uh, landing bay gear doors. That's what I'm lining up to. And so when I've got that lined up, that's sort of where she wants to live, right? So I'll put a little dot there and a little dot there and a little dot there. And that's my my lineup. So what we'll do is we're going to use a method to get these wet that um, some of you may have used before and, and some of you may have not. I don't know. But I can tell you categorically it is a, a very efficient way to soak very large decals. And that is a spray bottle. I'm using just a little small spray bottle. Um, and spray away. Um, now, if you, obviously, if you're <laughs> doing this in your living room, just make sure the cat isn't under you, right? <laughs> well, well, any of it doesn't like water, I'm sure the dog will get, be excited. But anyway, that's nice and wet. And these are releasing quite fast. Um, and then I'm going to just hit the hit the, the, uh, the surface of this. Now, uh, this doesn't need to be a gloss surface. Um, it does need to be a white or off-white surface. I've deliberately let overspray hit this so it's not a pure white surface, but um, as long as you have a little bit of water down, I found the, these decals work really well. Um, and it'll only take a second to actually release. You can believe that. And uh, now, um, what I haven't done yet is um, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to actually have these uh, exposed um, ports here. Um, they're open on the Discovery shuttle, and I do have um, a, a decal for it. Um, I haven't done any real detail work on that yet. Um, I think I will. But I think it's a lot easier to get this, uh, this whole stencil laid down, or this decal laid down, uh, before I start deciding what I'm, what I'm doing and, uh, and not doing. Um, so let us uh, get going here. And um, this should have released. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Give this a quick test. Yeah, it's almost there. It's almost there. It's a big decal, obviously. Ah, what I didn't want to have happen. Let me get these out of the way. Um, yeah, it's, al it's already separating up here, so here we go. Fasten your seat belts. Uh, because this is where it gets a little gnarly. It's very, very thin. But if we, if we stay true to our if we stay true to our registration marks here, we should be okay. Put a little bit of pressure here and carefully. Out she comes. That is right on it. So let me lift this up a little bit. Just get that down there. I'm going to pick it up for a second here and just take a quick look. Yep, we're right on. So I'm going to take my paper towel. And I'm going to just dab this water off here. And uh, miracle of miracles, that went down quite well.
Okay. There we go. Now the good news about this this lighting situation is I am able to see whether or not I've got some bubbles and I do have a I do have some bubbles. But um if you're careful that came came out quite nicely. Um so that's good. So that's down. So now I want to continue because I want to kind of see, you know, I, I want to try to get my, my symmetry here, right? So there's my, my other one. And they are not perfect. Uh, but again, you know, I'm trying to line up to my, my, uh, my, 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 my doors and not anything else. So that's what I'm doing. So I'll put one there and I'm going to put one there. And I'll also, I think I'll just put one right there and right there. Okay. So those are those pin marks. And I think what I'm going to do is, is uh, I'm going to wait just a little bit and then I'm going to apply some, uh, some Walther's uh, setter. Um, you do have to be careful with the Walther's. I've noticed with um, some of these aftermarket decals that uh, you get a little, um, you know, curl. And I think it's important to remember that, you know, this is aftermarket stuff. And the reason why I say that is because we expect these things to be perfect, right? They're offered to us for use on our kits. They come from third parties, oftentimes talented modelers who are just trying to help the community. Now, sometimes it's to make the almighty buck, but I think the intentions are usually quite honorable. And this is greatly appreciated, but you know, you have to stop and remember that you're not dealing with something that necessarily has excellent quality control or is, you know, has been perfectly um, sort of finished, you know, uh, when these went through the printer, did they go through a really high quality uh, printer, you know, was it inkjet, was it laser jet, uh, did it get a couple of, uh, you know, sort of sprays of uh, varnish over it to set the decals, where were they stored? I've noticed some of them are a little stained. Uh, some of them are uh, a little bled a little bit. It's the nature of the beast. It is, it sort of is what it is, as they say. I hate to use that phrase, but it's, it's, it's sort of true. Um, okay. Here we go again. So we'll, uh, lay this down, find our registration point, and looks pretty good, and hope that when we pull, now I do want to come up, looks like I want to come up there. Now, get my tweezers, check my mark here, um, okay, that's pretty good. Get under this just a little bit, sorry I'm not talking to you while I'm doing this, I'm trying to concentrate. but. Okay, that's pretty good, and so we just have to give it a spritz here, and sort of see where we are in terms of working out some of these, um, let's 
some of these. Yep, and it's it is allowing me to push air out to the sides, so we got good contact. That's really good. Okay, so they're on, and uh, so. Now, it doesn't look like much now. It looks like a bit of a dog's breakfast. But we're getting there, right? We're, we're getting there. Let me, let me turn her around. And uh, let's see here. If I'm going to be able to work from this side. I don't think so. This is going to be awkward. But that's okay. We, we'll, we'll, we'll work with what we've got. So uh, the next one that I'm going to put on is this one. And I did use, it, it, it allows you to have overlap here. Um, you can see that uh, when I lay it down on the surface, like that, I've got some, some pretty good, uh, you know, it, it is jagged up a little bit so that, that it allows you to disappear. And I think you'll see that that is actually working quite well. So I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. Um, that's not going to require uh, anything other than me just making sure I overlap that. So that should be um, that should be relatively easy. Um, so let me hit this one with some water. Now, my shop floor is concrete, and this evaporates pretty fit. I know if you're sitting in the house, you're going to me, Phil, I cannot spray water all over my rug. What planet are you on? And I go, I know, and I'll apologize for that. I'm just, I've seen this uh, done. In fact, I learned how to do this from uh, uh, Boyd Crompton uh, uh, over at Tretworks, an exceptionally talented um, modeler um, and um, so uh, that's where I learned this this technique so I have to give credit where credit is due um, he's just very smart that way okay so um, I'm looking down on it now and what I see interestingly enough is is I see where I've got um, the uh, I've got these remnants here. Well, not remnants. I've got the exact eye holes. So this lined up absolutely perfect. It's amazing. Absolutely perfect. So I just, I, I could not be happier with that. Um, that's the decal gods being kind to me today for some reason. see here uh, wants to release but almost wants to release trying to be patient um, I'm um, I'm also going to in this in, in this final final show uh, do a little bit of weathering for you and um, while I'm letting this decal release I think I'll, uh, I'll also show you this um, what I love about this is um, Oops. Oops, sorry about that. What I love about this picture is it, it just shows you how they sprayed discovery on the, the thermal blankets. Look at how dirty these thermal blankets are. Um, anyway, lot, lot, lots of fun there. And we'll be there after this segment. But I wanted to keep going here just for, for a minute or two. Um, see here so let me try to line those up like that pull that down there oh that's pretty good that's okay You 
you've got to be real careful here because you can definitely um, you can definitely run out of luck here when it comes to these. Yeah, see, I just pushed it, pulled it away. So now what I've got to do, which is good, this is to see you how you fight with these things sometimes. We've got to get it up. Got to get it back in its position here. And I can see now I'm starting to run out of luck because there. That's as good as I'm going to get, um, which is not terrible. But you do have to be careful. And um, as I said, I'm going to go around and I'm going to dab in these little patches and you, you, you won't see it. I mean, first of all, the reality of it is, is this, this model is going to be presented <laughs> the other way up. So we're doing all this work, uh, but we're trying to, uh, we're trying to memorialize the discovery as it's seen in, in the Smithsonian. So there you go. Okay, um, I'm going to um, I'm going to continue to lay down my decals. I'll show you what that looks like um, when that's all finished, uh, and maybe we'll we'll do a little touch up to the decals, uh, and then we'll be ready to flip this back on its uh, front and start working on some weathering. I see light at the end of this shuttle tunnel, <laughs> so let's keep going. Decals are in. And uh, not, as, not as tricky as I thought it could be because these aftermarket decals, once they're moist and they start to dry out really quickly, and then if you try to reposition them, even though you've got enough water under there and you've got a, a slick enough surface for there to be enough friction, they just they don't like to be moved. But they, we did it. We did it. We survived. And um, here, we, here we are. Now, don't panic. I'm showing you these steps as we go. We've done no washes to this. We haven't calmed it down. Um, and we've not finished. Uh, we've got to now put in the rest of the carbon, carbon uh, uh, portion of these wings. These were carbon, carbon. And uh, so we've got a little bit, little bit to do here. And a little bit to do there. I have been working on the gears. I've added uh, some aluminum, w uh, which which is correct, and I've started to add a little pipage just to give it some interest. You'll never see it, but you know it's the classic. We'll know it's there. But everything is in, and um, I'm I'm quite happy with it. You'll notice where I've had to add a little bit of my my black, but once I've calmed this down. Um, I think it'll be fine. And I've got just a little bit of cleanup here on this edge here and uh, a little bit there, which I'm going to do now. I'm going to pick all that off with an airbrush. Uh, but primarily, I wanted to get this drying because I want to be able to put it on its butt again so that we can start uh, doing a little more work uh, on, the, on the aging process and the detailing process. But anyway, they're in. And now, uh, once this has uh, been allowed to dry, um, I'll hit it with a matte varnish to calm it, calm it all down. But I won't do that until I've got this all picked off and painted in, um, because uh, what, I, what I don't want to do is I, I, I don't want to risk these uh, decals um, sort of coming up on me. Um, but I don't appear to have any bubbles at all. I mean, it, they, they went down really well. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Let me, uh, let me turn this around and leave it on its, uh, leave it on its side. Um, and it'll be ready to take the wheels. But I won't do that um, until the absolute, absolute end because something, something inevitably will, will, will snap. Um, but uh, they are down, and um, I, I think that once I get my oils on here to suggest some, you know, the, all of those sort of little hits, little dirt hits, 
um, it should start to look pretty good. Um, and then I've got some uh, some white bleaching to do and some some other things to do to the engine uh, engine cones. We'll take a look at that um, in, in in just a little bit. But I wanted to show you this. So uh, I'll continue to clean up the undercarriage here, and uh, and and then um, we'll flip it over and we'll we'll look at uh, some of the the final weathering and aging. But uh, there they go. They went on, and they went on. Uh, they went on quite well. So uh, let us carry on. Okay. Um, so my belly decals are drying, and um, I've given everything. Um, I, I've cleaned up everything on my carbon carbon wingtips, and uh, so that's all looking pretty good. Um, like that. So I'm happy with that. Uh, what I wanted to do now was um, I wanted to uh, show you that I've been working on the very top of this. And um, the, uh, the shuttle itself took, uh, took a lot of beating, um, hits, dust, all kinds of stuff. And uh, you can see it's got these patches and these panels. And so I've exaggerated that um, as you can see and uh, now what I want to do is just I want to tone that down um, which is what I'm going to do right now with uh, just a dusting of my white uh, white which is uh, my uh, 71001 um, and that should should start to pull this back a little bit and hopefully you'll see that pulling back a little bit as we as we sort of try to do a little bit of a blending in here of everything just to take it back Take it back quite a bit, actually. Almost non-existent in some places. And, in, and of course, as this starts to dry, you will get a, you'll, you'll get a really nice uh, blending effect, I think. Um, Sometimes I have a tendency to go a little overboard and I have to remind myself not to do it, but um, I, think it's, uh, I think it's worth it. Sorry, I'm putting a little paint in my uh, brush, which is why you're staring at a blank model and nothing's going on. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I don't want to go down any more than that. Although this panel at the back maybe could do it a little more. It's a little too exact. There you go. Started to look a little too exaggerated, but that's okay. It's a model, right? So I am super happy with that. Um, I've now got to start thinking about final details. Let me, uh, let me show you this. So as you can see here, um, there's some gr grime and uh, there's some streaking. Uh, there, there's a haphazardness to this, but there's a structure to it as well. It's hard to explain, um, but as you can see, just under the Y of discovery, that thermal blanket to the right of the Y is absolutely stained. And the blanket to the left of it and just under the Y are perfectly clean, which leads me to believe that they were replaced. Which is why 
um, I'm doing what I'm doing um, just to sort of add it, but uh, add that kind of texture. But um, where I where I'm too, where it's too much, um, I'm just taking it down a little bit. Uh, where I where I think it's too much, um, but you know, for the most part, uh, that that exaggeration, that exaggeration is 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 okay, I think. So. Um, we are uh, definitely uh, coming along here. That doesn't help you, does it? There, there you go. Now, uh, one of the things I want to show you here is where um, well, I'm on the wrong side, where you can see all of my, my areas are just too raised to, to the camera. And in, 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 uh, in the studio here, also a little too raised. Now, one of the things that I've been working on and it may fail miserably, in which case it is what it is, and it's a learning lesson. But I've been taking this all, and I've actually been going around, and I've been pushing these seam lines down. Um, and it, it has worked in some places, and in other, other, others it hasn't. Now, um, that may be where I come a cropper on this model, and have sort of personally uh, set a, lo <laughs> a lower bar than I'd hoped. Um, you know, sometimes y y you sort of, y you build it and then you go, okay, here's the mistakes I made. Here's what I've learned. If you don't build something, you're never going to learn. And this has been a great learning experience for me because one of the things I sure would love to see is some stencils that allow us to spray discovery or the spray the name of it through a stencil onto the fabric, whatever that fabric ultimately is. Now, um, some of the places uh, where I, I think I've done very well, and I'm, I want to show you, um, I'm going to try and in fact, I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. Hold on for a second. Uh, let's take a look at that again. While I get you closer, I want to get closer here, there, with my camera here. And I want to show you, I want to show you something that I think is really interesting. Um, here's my rear tail. Um, let me try to find it there. Um, so this laid down really well. Some of these did not lay down at all. Now I've not cleaned this up yet and I will and it hasn't been washed or painted or nothing has happened to it but you can see where it has started to lift. That's no good. So I'm going to have to go back and clean that up which is what I'll do right now. Um, to my eye when I was looking at the, uh, when I was looking at this, I saw a lot more of a haphazardness than perhaps is, is, is there. Um, and you can see where discovery is by the, by the window. I couldn't, I couldn't get my, uh, I couldn't get my name there. Uh, and you can see the way it sort of twists across the curvature of the nose. I had to move mine, uh, so mine is not accurate. But what I was able to do um, is is incorporate these these tiles, which are the older tiles, which I think worked out really well by the door, and um, I'm pretty happy with that. Now I've done nothing to clean that up yet, and that's what that's what we're going to do now. We're going to start going going through it. I added some watch parts to the umbilical cord here. And I think that is fun and has added some realism to the model. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that. Um, so, you know, we'll do sort of a final, final review in the final, final reveal. Um, but lots to talk about and lots of things that I'm happy with, lots of things that I think really worked and some things where I think I actually um, failed. But that's okay because when I say failed, I don't mean failed in a negative sense. I mean failed in terms of 
okay, I've got something to learn about here. I've got, I've got a, something to, you know, s something to understand. Um, scale, uh, texture, form, what the eye sees. All of that is uh, what makes it exciting for me. And I'm glad I've tackled this. And it's not going to be the last one I tackle. I will do it again at some point. Um, maybe I'll find another version of this. I don't know. I do love the scale of it because it's a lot easier for me to handle uh, because of my big uh, fat fingers. But um, perhaps a smaller version uh, w wouldn't hurt either. But anyway, let me uh, keep cleaning this up and then um, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little more weathering on camera um, in a little bit. But i um, pretty happy with where this is going. Um, I, uh, I feel like, you know, I, I, I feel like it's got, um, it's got a lot of potential. Um, I really do. I mean, I, I, I'm showing you this thing, warts and all, all sort of close up. Uh, but I think, um, you know, there are some things that really worked. My engines, uh, my engine bells really worked. I, I, I worked very hard on those and we'll take a, we'll take a closer look at those at the end. But anyway. We're getting there, and uh, now it's sort of down to just uh, smaller details, really, and some and, and, and some weathering, which I'm going to do with some oils. Um, not much I can do about the raised nature of these of these panels, but you know, in person, three feet away, <laughs> it looks pretty good. But stick a camera right up to it, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but I'm good. I'm happy. Uh, I, 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 I feel good about it. A uh, little bit more to do. Uh, so the next, the next thing for me is, is I'm, I'm going to really sort of start diving into these details here and try and get some of these blankets, uh, you know, a, a little more dirty and a little more stained. Um, and then, uh, I think, what we might do after that is sort of just go around and have a final look uh, and then we'll hit it with a matte varnish everywhere which hopefully will calm it down um, and then uh, we'll do a final final but uh, here we go <clears throat> okay streaking so I'm using oils I'm using my Aptalongs and I've got, um, take a look at what I've, I'm using. I've got the um, Dust, which is a great color. I'm also using uh, their Snow White. And I'm going to be using uh, Light Flesh Tone. And I've chosen those colors because this photo that I took of the shuttle shows you those various colors uh, and what what you're really looking at is 3,000 degrees of heat hitting this surface and just frying the bejesus out of it. So um, that's what we're trying to uh, to, to try and 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 replicate here. Um, and uh, the way I like to do this is I like to uh, use a little bit of uh, odorless thinner and my oils and the beautiful thing about oils is if you've never used them before um, and the first time I ever attempted this was on my um, Diagostini uh, Millennium Falcon and uh, the great uh, Steve uh, Dimzo um, if, if, if you've never seen his tutorial on painting uh, it, it, it's extraordinary. He's a very talented model maker and visual effects artist. And uh, so his tutorial is really all you need uh, to be able to, to do what I'm doing. Um, and, I, and, and I'm still learning. But anyway, I wanted to show you this process. Um, I've got the, uh, the bay doors in, uh, the wheels are in, and it has a satin uh, coat on it. So it's, uh, it's a little shiny at the moment. Uh, but uh, looking, looking good, looking good. And so here we go. And what I want to do is, is I want to take just a little, um, 
just a little brush or a toothpick. I'm going to use a toothpick and I'm going to um, get, some, get some paint on this surface. So let's go sort of like this, like that, and do one area at a time. Don't go crazy. And then um, you're going to just take a little brush and you're going you're gonna to hit it like that. Um, now, everything's going to go that way, obviously, because um, that way is the way the ship is flying. So, and the beautiful thing about this is if it's too much, if it's too much, you just take it off. Um, and you've got plenty of time. We've got hours and hours and hours. So um, you can see here uh, that that's starting to streak and it's starting to streak really well. And I think you'll agree that that effect is looking pretty good, pretty close to that effect. So what I want to do is I want to sort of mix it up a little bit too. So I won't just use the white. I'll also use some of the, uh, the brown, but I want to control, or the flesh tone, I should say, and then the beige. But I want to basically control where I'm going, right? So um, I don't want to, I don't really want to uh, put too much down at once because you'll, you'll, you'll ruin the effect. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's looking really good. I apologize for the glare. I'm hoping you can see some of that. Uh, let me try and put it in the shadows. There we go. You start to see this working and you've got to sort of really blend it and then not be afraid if it comes off just to start again because you can wipe the whole thing down. As I said, this is going to take absolutely days to, uh, to dry. And so you really get an opportunity to, uh, to play with it. And uh, that's the fun of this. So with a little bit of, uh, of, the, of the turp, turpentine on, I go to town. And you can adjust direction and everything else. And then I've got a bigger brush here. And with the bigger brush, I can actually start to, I can actually start to really sort of blend some of this out and make some of it go away um, to, the, to wherever I want. So I'm super happy with that. That's, that's a really, uh, that's a good look. And uh, let me tip it to this camera so you can see a little better. Uh, now, to this camera, it might not look much, but I promise you, um, it's, it's looking really good. And then what, what we'll do is, once we're happy with what we've got, um, we will, uh, I'm going to soften this out with some, some, some uh, some com com uh, uh, com art the uh, Awada version uh, that their their airbrush uh, paints uh, and um, really soften this down even more and uh, I think it'll look really good so um, I think that you know one of the things you you do have to do though is you do have to take it very, very slowly. Uh, don't be in a rush and um, and make sure you've got different variations of what you're going for uh, so that you you don't you don't ruin the effect but you also you know have different different versions of it and uh, there you'll see that's really coming uh, along and uh, so 
eventually what we're hoping to do here is, as I said, mimic this. And uh, I will come back in a nanosecond. <laughs> it's a half an hour, 45 minutes of playing with this. Get it all down and then show you what it looks like. And then we'll let that dry. Okay. Here's a, a quick look at uh, what the product looks like once it's all blended. Um, this is the maneuverable shield that protects the, uh, the engine bells, um, the engines themselves uh, for, for landing. And, and uh, you can see uh, that, that that has really made a huge difference. Um, now, d don't be freaked out by it. It looks very heavy. Um, you can, you can, if you want to, uh, you know, you can keep, continue to blend in. I'm not going to because the secret sauce now is a mat, is a mat varnish over this. That's the secret sauce. And so let this dry. It's going to take about two days to really dry. And then we can hit that with a mat, uh, varnish and, uh, see, see what we've got. So, um, Great fun, and um, you know, uh, again, sometimes for me, you know, it's a it's a sort of an over exaggeration, perhaps, of what you might see, um, but that that's okay because that's what it's all about is 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 sort of um, is giving giving the eye uh, uh, just a sense of, of what's going on, and uh, that's just enough to sort of sell sell it. But uh, this is really um, it's really coming together quite well. I'll uh, I'll continue to just do a little bit of blending, and then um, I think uh, we shall do a final reveal. So here she is in all of her splendor and glory, I would say. Um, the, uh, the model as uh, the, the, it's depicted now as it looks in the Smithsonian. And I've done my best to try to pick out some of the details that uh, at least uh, sort of stuck out to me when I, uh, when I went to see the, uh, the, the, the shuttle. It's an impressive sight as you walk towards it. it you, you just, you're in awe of the scale and the size of this thing. And when you really start to take a hard look at it, it's really interesting to notice all the details. Uh, you know, your black tiles and your white tiles and where they're positioned and how they're positioned. It, a mosaic of fascination. Um, whoever the engineers were who had to hand cut or have uh, in, you know, these individual tiles have their own place and marker and each one is numbered. It's extraordinary. And then the thermal blankets themselves and how some areas of the ship, they appear to be very haphazard with long strips of blanket and then large squares of blanket and then smaller squares and diagonals. And um, they all kind of come together. And uh, so that's what I was trying to uh, accomplish uh, with, this, uh, with this example. Uh, this is the Ravel, obviously, the 172. Uh, Monogram has one as well. And now I am hearing from a couple of subscribers and s from some of the things that I've read that the opinion is, is that the Monogram uh, model is actually more accurate than this one. I don't know. I've never seen it. I haven't built it, but it would be curious to hear from all of you as to what you think. I did notice there are some things uh, on this kit that um, um, were curiously just wrong, and I want to go over those. Uh, I also want to say that uh, on a scale of one to ten, I'm giving myself a six for this build. Um, I'm I'm happy with it. I, it it's going to look great on my uh, on my display shelf, but I'm going to try again. I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it. Um, you know, m maybe early next year. I'm not sure when, but I want to do it again, and I want to try a different method. Uh, I love 
the way these thermal blankets look out of the medical tape. I am not in love with how I layered one on top of the other. There are some areas where I put them side by side and it's a better look and I'll show you that. Also, um, I was hoping that I could get the cloth to lay down a little better than it did. So there are some areas here where uh, you'll see where it, 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 it just doesn't feel right. So, um, so there was that. Uh, there was also the, the windows themselves. I noticed when I got the Lake County decals that the windows uh, that, that are, um, the, the window decals that come with that are, are radically different than the windows that, that come with the, uh, the model. And I know um, that there is a couple of really talented builders out there who have actually physically removed these and uh, re rebuilt them. And I might try that again. Um, I, 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 I might even see if I can find a 3D print of the correct windows and, and, and do that. Um, my aftermarket parts um, were wonderful. Um, my engine bells are, are just amazing. And the, uh, the, 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 no, the nose um, uh, control system for maneuvering the ship was also awesome. However, I had to make a tough choice and that was, do I leave it uh, painted and then uh, weather it and distress it and use the actual tile makeup that was printed into this piece or do I use the decals to try and blend? And ultimately I chose to use the decals. Don't know if I was right or not, but that's what I did. I also had to get a second set of decals with white tiles um, and where those went on to the, uh, the, 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 the surface of this, um, some, of the, some of the tiles themselves had to have a light gold gray under them in order to see them. Others just needed white. Uh, to see them because they were they were printed slightly differently, but I did need tiles that were white in certain areas of of uh, of the ship. Um, so I've done that, um, and then of course my hinges. I didn't use any of the hinges from the um, from the decal sets. I, I created my own out of plastic card because they looked just a little beefier and a little more correct. Um, and then um, I weathered the underneath of this, and uh, let me let me show you that real quickly. Um, there, th that's what I've done, and um, I'm 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 pretty uh, pretty happy with it. Um, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, I could have perhaps done a little more with the dulling down, but um, I didn't. I could have blended my uh, my streaks a little more, but I didn't. Um, but I love the effect, and it, it is pretty correct. Um, but if uh, if you do this any fainter, you're just not going to see anything. And I did want to sort of simulate those those scorches. Uh, so there it is. Um, I beefed up my uh, um, my wheel bay uh, doors, uh, as you can see, and I'm really really happy with those. Um, I think I did a really nice job with that. That's a better look. Actually, th th that's probably a more appropriate look for that. Um, and um, here is my beefed up doors. Um, and I added some, some cabling to them, as you, as you can see. Um, I'm not pointing correctly here. Uh, there. I added, I, I, and I'm really happy with those. And I added some aluminum to the base. So... That, that is all correct, um, as well as I did to the front. And um, what I did not get to is the exposed rear umbilicals. Um, I did have a decal for those. Uh, didn't love it. Didn't love it. So I didn't use it. Um, I, um, I also uh, want to show you the, the rear engines because I'm, I'm, I'm super happy with those. Um, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. I thought that turned out really well. And um, 
I just love the detail on those 3D prints and of course the, the, the caution decals as well. Um, and you can see all the tiles that I, that I had to add, um, all correct and looking exactly like Discovery looks. Um, so, so there, there it is. Um, final words. Um, I don't really know what to say. You know, um, I, I, I look at it and um, I'm really happy with it. I, I, I think it's a great interpretation of what this beautiful craft looks like. But there's a lot of things that I feel like I can do better or I want to try something else. Um, but as, the, as I look at it with the eye, I, I, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, my decals, for instance, my large United States decals and my NASA decals, um, you know, this one in particular, they're actually on the surface of the plastic, um, whereas if you look at the actual shuttle, all of the markings themselves are, are actually sprayed onto uh, the, 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 thermal, the thermal blankets. So, um, and uh, I am also very... Um, I'm very happy with the uh, the effect I got on the uh, the bay doors here, the cargo bay doors. Um, I think that looks pretty good, and I hit it with a little bit of a satin varnish as opposed to everything else got a matte, just to kind of set it off and accentuate it. And uh, the only other thing I, I I wanted to show you is the the nose of this. Um, see here if you look at the nose um i uh, love what i did with the scorching on the front there so i think that looks pretty good and you know imagine walking up to this thing uh it, it's pretty imposing the other thing that the cloth tape does is it it gives it um a, a, it gives it a real sense of girth and that's what I, I, I really love. Um, when you look at the model um, with the naked eye, not on camera, uh, you, you genuinely feel like you're looking at something that's got some substance to it. So I'm really happy with that. So anyway, there you go. Um, the 172 Revell 40th anniversary kit um, finished as it looks in the Smithsonian in uh, Washington, D.C., uh, parked um, a, a, with pride and glory. And uh, I'll consider this take one. Uh, and I'm going to uh, definitely do this again. I've learned an awful lot and there's a lot more I can do. But tackle this. Uh, get those aftermarket parts. Play with it. Have fun with it. If you don't have a shuttle in your collection, you got to have one. I mean, this is real science, right? This is real space travel. And it belongs um, ne next to all of our other spaceships and, and, and real science. So, um, I, I, and, I'm, I, and I know it's going to have a place of honor in my collection. So there you go. That's my effort. <laughs> um, so thank you for, for following this build. Um, thank you to all of my subscribers for some amazing comments and some really helpful tip tips. And also guiding me when I've got things wrong, you know, uh, um, so, and I really appreciate it. I, I, I really do. Um, and uh, as always, if you like the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I wish all of you, please be well, be safe, build something, and I'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.